right. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Uh, Jessica Henry Gray here. I'm excited to be live with you today. Um, so I wanted to just talk about today um, some of the things that I'm going to be working on um, for this week's, this Friday's tips and techniques. So um, what we're going to be doing is I'm going to talk about um, using edges in your landscape painting. Last week I talked about uh, painting edges and um, how, why we make certain decisions that we do. Um, so this week I'm gonna talk about using those um, thought processes in your landscape painting. All right, so while I wait for a couple more people, I know um, I'll just wait for some more people to join. Uh, I wanna talk to you about a couple of new things that I have that's kind of exciting going on. On my website, if you go to jessicahenryfineart.com, um, I am now offering workshop lessons on my website. So I've got um, some, I've got portrait, there are four, three, three video lessons for the portrait, um, five landscape lessons um, in plein air painting, as well as um, the pet portrait. There's three videos for the pet portrait. And each one of them comes with private coaching, personal coaching. So um, check those out. They're priced really, really well, like 150 for the three video lesson, 200 for so it's a super good deal, and I'm really excited to share those with you. Um, and also, you know, um, I'll be scheduling times to do the personal coaching. So if that's something that you'd like to do, if you buy those videos, that comes with the package of the videos. Um, if you just want personal coaching, I'm now, I'm now offering that on my website as well. So that's, that's news there. So we're just waiting a little bit longer for some more people to join. Um, I hope everybody had a good week, and you're staying warm wherever you are. Um, oh, uh, let's see another thing. Um, this is this is something so ex I'm so excited to share this with you too. Um, I am going to be doing some more workshops this year. I'm going to be teaching in Ireland and France this year. Um, the Ireland workshop we're still working on the exact dates that I'll be there, but um, I've, I'm going to be doing some smaller workshops along the coast. But also. I will be teaching at the Dublin Plein Air Festival um, June 20th to the 26th. I'll be teaching one of those days in there. So that's really exciting. That's a big deal. Um, but then from there, I go directly down to France to teach my uh, Les Vieux Covent workshop, finally. <laughs> that's been a long time in coming um, with the COVID and everything. It kept pushing it back. Uh, so yeah, that's happening this year. Um, we're, we're pretty sure. <laughs> I mean, nobody can have a crystal ball, but... Yes, yeah, so we're excited about that, and there, we could probably squeeze in a few more people um, if you are interested in joining us. And of course, I will have all that information on my website as well. So, okay, so I'm going to jump in. We've got a nice group of people here. Today I'm going to be working from a photo, and you can see it um, on some of these screens. I'm actually on YouTube and Facebook, so I've got my both my cameras set up here. And I've got this really cool beach scene that I took in Destin, Florida which is one of the locations that I will be at here in the U.S. Um, this year. Uh, in April, I'll be teaching in Destin, Florida, uh, and I forgot to mention that, as well as Cannon Beach later in the year. Cannon Beach, Oregon. So, okay, so this is Destin, Florida, and I want to demonstrate, as I'm painting here, what to do and what not to do. Okay, so as I go along, I'm going to show you some of the common mistakes I see people doing and then how to fix those to use your edges to create the illusion of depth into your paintings. Now, again, uh, my back is going to be turned away from the camera, so I won't be able to see your comments as easily, but I will get to them after the video. I always um, go and double check, make sure if there's anything urgent or that maybe I answered as I'm going along. Um, I'm going to try to move this just a little bit closer so you can see. <clears throat> I, I can never tell when my shoulder's turned if I'm actually... <laughs> casting a shadow or blocking the camera. So we'll just give it a whirl here. So I have my palette here, my regular colors. Let's just angle this down a little bit more. Sorry if the whole world collapses here, but I'm gonna just make some adjustments real quick so you can see a little better my palette. Okay. Um, okay. So I'm going to start out with, got my paper towels. Now I put on a couple extra blues on my palette because working on this 
sky with the water. I always kind of find that I my ultramarine blue is just not quite right. So, oops, so I'm going to use, I've got some phthalo blue as well as some cerulean blue. And um, I'm going to use some of those to get that color just right. But again, today I don't really want to focus entirely on the color as much as I do on the edges. There we go. All right, so let's jump in. I'm just gonna thin down a little bit of paint just to block in where I'm gonna go with the composition. Probably just a little more blue than brown. Thinking about in thirds here. And work that straight across. I, I had wanted to um, <laughs> do a, like a, a two separate paintings here, one that had all the mistakes and the other that it that my, was my demo, but I just couldn't get at it and I thought, well, maybe I'll just show you while doing a demo what not to do. <laughs> so let's see. I love, I love the dynamic um, design of this photo. I took this picture um, while I was in Florida on the beach teaching a workshop last year and the water is the most beautiful turquoise shade um, of blue and but what's really they're really famous for is the white sugar white sand which is you take your shoes off and it feels like you're walking on silk okay so that's that's fine enough for the composition at this point and it looks like we have a glare on the YouTube camera. Let's turn that off. Oh, okay. I think we're better. All right. So let's see. I'm going to take a little bit of the phthalo blue now and some white. At the top of the sky here, we're not way at the top of the dome of the, that the sky creates. Way at the top. It's a beautiful ultramarine blue. But as the sky goes down toward the horizon, that blue gets a little bit warmer. And so I'm going to, that's why I'm using the phthalo blue, because it's just a little bit warmer of a blue, whereas the blue on the top is almost a purple. And that's where the ultramarine blue kind of makes more sense for that. So we're coming down. And I just do a little bit across the top. I'll we'll grab some more white into that. And there's not a lot of incredible science you need to know for painting skies, but um, the important part is to create the illusion of being inside a dome. So this uh, knowing and understanding that is just a little bit of knowledge, and once you get it, um, it's just a matter of observing next time you're out doing your painting. And that's what I like to do in these winter months when um, it's just really cold to go outside, is to study taking, working from photos and how to use those um, with my plein air experience to work for, uh, I, I combine the two. I got a little tiny bit of phthalo green and more white. I don't know if you can see. I'm going to hold my palette up like this so you can see a little better. A little bit of phthalo green into that white will actually warm it a little bit more as it comes down to the horizon of the water. I'm going to try to hurry on this painting so I'm not going to get really fussy with all the detail like I would, even if I was plein air painting, because I just want to underscore the importance of using edges. So you've probably all noticed when you take a picture, all the edges are crisp. Everything is equal treatment. And a lot of times I've seen a lot of beginners paint everything that way. And I think that the logic is, is that um, if you can get your painting to look just like the photo, then it will be a success. And nine times out of ten, people are unhappy with their finished results. And that's usually because our mind, our, our brain, doesn't register 
distance and everything looks flat. So let me clean this off real quick. So we have to make those executive decisions. Even though we can look out in nature and see sharp edges, we can't paint it that way. So I'm going to just take a minute here and soften the sky so that it's not distracting with all of this choppiness. I feel like I'm doing a little bit of Bob Ross. <laughs> just these little X's. The sky has such a beautiful, gentle, tapering work. What is it? Um, gradating down to the horizon. And I want to get that. All right. Okay. Well, good enough. Now, the next thing I'm going to focus on is getting the horizon of the water in place. I'm just going to take a nice, um, this is a synthetic brush, but it's got a, it can get a really nice chiseled edge. And I want this brush to demonstrate my point. So I'm going to take some ultramarine blue and some phthalo green. And this is my really dark color for the edge of the horizon. Okay. Now I'm just taking and trying to get a nice sharp edge. Sorry, I'm not breathing at this moment. Okay, so razor sharp edge across the, the edge. Now if I leave it like that, you can't tell that that edge is any further away than the sharp edges I'll put in here, okay? I'm gonna leave it like that for now, and then I'll come back and show you later how by softening that edge, you can create the illusion of distance. All right, so it's hard for me, <laughs> I wanna fix it, but I'm gonna come back now and finish painting the water a little bit more of the phthalo green and some white into that. I like to add a little yellow ochre into that. And it just makes a beautiful ocean color. So we'll paint and just, just lay in some of that turquoise color that I see in the water. I'll add a little bit more of the cadmium yellow. Oh, I don't think I told you what colors are on my palette today. I have um, titanium white. I'm not going to be using the cadmium red. I, I have no plans. That's another painting I'm working on. Cadmium yellow light and cadmium medium. Yellow ochre burnt sienna. And then my extra blues, I have the cerulean blue. And over here I have phthalo blue. That's my ultramarine. I have alizarin crimson, or alizarin permanent and phthalo green on my palette. Okay, so adding a little bit of white and the cadmium yellow medium to that phthalo green mixture, I get that really pretty color that I see right here in the water. Now, if I lay the paint down in a nice thick application, it typically doesn't mess with the paint underneath it, but if I start smudging my brush, it's gonna pick that up and you get muddy color. So just lay it down, leave it alone. Go get more if you need more. Okay. Now I'm purposely not softening my edges to illustrate the point of how it can um, you can create depth by softening them. So I'm showing you what not to do first. is about complete there. Oh, 
All right. So, I'm brush off. No, I'm just gonna get a new brush. Those phthalos are so, they permeate everything they touch. Okay, so now I'm gonna start with the sand because it's further away than these um, dunes here. So, again, now this is a, a Mongoose Eclipse by um, Rosemary. It's, it's not, I don't think that they are continuing the real Mongoose, but it's similar. And I like it because it's got a nice sharp edge. Um, so, getting my white sand, but now, see, I think that's just a little too white. So I'm going to add a little bit of, let's throw in some purple. I've got some alizarin crimson, or alizarin permanent. I've got some phthalo green in that, but that's okay. Just a nice purple shade. Some white, just put it right next to it, and then I want some yellow ochre into that to make it feel a bit of linseed oil. All right, here we go. Sand. It's too dark. It's usually a little bit darker right where the water's hitting it. I'm gonna really get that. You can make it look more sunlit with the white. It can look more sunlit with the littlest bit of cadmium yellow. Just really give it that illusion of being sunlit. So let's do that. And sometimes I'll just take a color and lay it right on top of another color right on my canvas and allow some of the mixing to take place right there. Just gives it a little more spontaneity. All right, now as we come down, we have more of the purple shadows created by the footprints and the dunes are creating a shadow. So we'll get some more of that purple mixed up here. So right in this area, there's a slight haze of shadow. I'm trying to get more work in. Oh well. Now this is not the typical way that I start a plein air painting. Normally I would begin by laying out the value relationships and so forth, but for the purpose of instructing um, uh, edges and their uses. I'm just laying down the color. Okay, so come on out. Now, where the shadow on the sand is most intense, take a little bit of that phthalo and the ultramarine blue, a little bit of alizarin. Take what you've already used, already mixed, here and there. So a little bit of the sun is peeking through here. Let's lay that down. If 
I was going to be working on this for a more in-depth painting, I probably would be concentrating more on the pattern that I see in the sand of the footprints and so forth. But for the purpose of edges, I'm just going to keep it quiet and go with what I see when I'm squinting down at the scene. Okay. All right. Now, when I squint down at the hill over there, the, the dune that comes up, I am just wanting to get what I see as I squint. A little ultramarine blue, a little burnt sienna. I'll take some of that yellow ochre. I don't want to go too dark, but it is the darkest passage in the painting. That helps define the edge of that dune. Let me get a little bit more yellow ochre. Yeah, I haven't put these two workshops, um, Dustin, Florida, and Cannon Beach, on my website yet. And Ireland is not there yet either. But um, if you're interested in taking them, let me know. Uh, I, will, I hope to get them up in the next week or so. And those two, here in the States, those fill really fast. The um, Florida and Cannon Beach, Oregon. Such a beautiful location. They're really some of my favorites. So as the light comes up the hill of the dune, I'm just adding a little bit more of the white and yellow ochre into that. Right into that blue. to indicate that that's the beach grass. And then some over here, this looks like got it. That fence is going to be um, very instrumental in illustrating my point about the edges, so I'm excited to get to that. <laughs> Some sand in and around the beach grasses. Some over here. Squinting down. Now I can take that sand and sort of carve out around the beach grasses. As you see, I just put those on pretty loose and quick. Now I'm coming through with the rest of the sand and carving out those little mounds of beach grass with a little bit more interest. Painting beach grass is kind of interesting though too because you have to work on it in layers. I'm gonna do some of the shadowy sand on this side. And I still haven't done anything with the fence yet, so we'll get to that here soon. I don't encourage people to paint um, quickly. I'm just doing this to get to my point quickly. Okay. All right, so now I'm just gonna take just one of these chiseled brushes again and get the information down to the fences. And so 
what does this come up with? It's more like a kind of a gray taupe color for the fence. So let's just use what I have. I'll use that blue already. And add some purple there, ozone. And I like to add a little bit of the burnt sienna and white. I'm running out of white. <laughs> Looks like a good kind of beach wood color. All right, so painting these fence posts, the beach fencing. I don't want to just go with the straight going straight down because I think it's not that interesting. So I just make little indications like this. more hue of gray. Up here where the white behind it is so bright, I have to make that board a little darker so it, it stands out. And then down here where the background behind the board is dark, we can paint it a little bit lighter. Like that to indicate that board goes all the way down. All right, so let me get these lighter segments done first. I think we came across this way. skinny ones over here so I'm a little less worried about lights and darks and just adjust where we're going with those. And I like to make some of them this way and that way because these fences are kind of rickety and they do lean quite a bit every which direction. So I've kind of got a mixture of the line, top line of those fence posts too. So it starts out a little higher and then it swoops down like that. And there's some fence posts too at the end that are darker. So let's hit those with a strong shadow. got some fences and I'll put the shadows in here in a little bit just get these fence posts here indicated now I hope that you're seeing what I'm seeing and that's that the painting feels flat because it is, <laughs> but I will show you once I get this a little bit further along by softening that horizon and doing a few things back there to really encourage um, distance that it makes a big difference. So we use our photos as reference, but that you can't, we can't be holding on to them with religious fervor um, you can't marry yourself to all of what you see on the photo as though it's doctrinal truth. And even out in nature, when you're plein air painting, um, you have to use, uh, you know, your artistic license, I guess, uh, to make decisions about what you're seeing. Because again, you don't, you can't be too literal. Sometimes you have to move a tree. Sometimes, you know, you have to make some adjustments, but most of the time, the number one thing that I see people struggling with is edges in their plein air paintings, as well as other, work, you know, portraits and things that people work on. I think especially portraits because people want to get them accurate. And so the 
the common idea or thought is that if you make everything super detailed, that it's going to look real. And that just isn't the case. There's, our brain needs to have the softer, lost edges. Okay, I'm going to do a few shadows down here on the ground. Make sure that when you do shadows that they're connected to something. If they are not, then the the suggestion then is, is that whatever is creating the shadow is floating. <laughs> you know, so we don't want that if it's actually a fence not floating. All right, so we'll do a few more layers over here. Now, what I want to illustrate, put my palette down, I'm going to need to the towel, and a soft dry brush. So, um, would the sand touching the um, water be the focal point? Yeah, just that, that whole invitation of this is kind of more in shadowed, uh, shadow area, so it's more like inviting the viewer in. And then we can come back there and just look around. Definitely the water. Usually in, in any painting, if you have water, it's, I don't, it's just a basic human nature trait. We're always drawn to water. And you'll see it take an instant change. So a clean, dry brush. Now I'm going to be really careful to not um, rework it. Clean my brush off. Every time I pick my brush off, I want to wipe it off because it's, it's getting a buildup of paint on the edge. Okay, so now I'm going to wipe that off really well. I'm going to come back just over the top, just in the sky, and clean that up again. Okay, clean it up. Now I'm going to go over the edge one more time. Really, the softener lose that. Now I'm going to come back in the water where I have all these stripes <laughs> of the water. And I'm going to lose some of those hard edges in the water. And so when you're softening edges, make sure that you wipe your brush off consistently so that it doesn't um, adulterate the other colors that you're trying to work with here. Okay, now as it comes down to the water, I want this passage where the water meets the sand to have a nice soft feeling where the water so thin and it just gently lays over the sand. Okay. Now that pushes that back and these edges I'll make a little bit sharper now so you can see the difference. I'm going to do that with a palette knife. I don't often work with a palette knife, but I want to today to illustrate my point. already covered in paint. That's why I didn't recognize it as new. <laughs> okay, so let's make these fence posts nice and sharp. So I'm going to take some of that color that I already mixed, this darker shadow color, and I'm going to lay this on like that. Just a little side Give you a nice sharp edge. And we're doing that because we soften the water and we're sharpening what's up close. 
we are using our edge quality to create that effect. I'm just going to take a little bit of the lighter color on the tops of these pencils. I hope I'm not in the way. Sorry if I am. <laughs> And by adding a nice crisp edge to these, again, it just helps further that illusion. No, oh, we had to run away. That's okay. All right, and we can even just take a little bit of this, we can scratch in some of the wire. interesting. Let's make it a little lopsided. Now on these I just kind of softened a little bit by running my brush or my palette knife over just to lose some of the harshness of that. Okay, so we'll maybe impact some of these a little bit more. But even just that little bit of palette knife working accentuates the nearness of this and then the rest goes back. So just okay, now one more thing before I wrap this up. I want to show you then how to take and finish beach grass. So let's take a smaller brush and I'm going to just kind of, just so that this, right now this is every bit as fuzzy as this, just from blocking it in. So I'm going to take my brush and make a little bit thinner batch of the, um, I'll take the yellow ochre, maybe some of this color that I already had, some blue, maybe some cad yellow, medium. Sometimes I'll mix like a, a spectrum of color, sort of a gradation, so I can jump into this or that. But beach grass always to me has a little bit of white in it just because it has that cool sort of tone. So I'm going to take and just flick it up in some places. And I'll come back here with my palette knife to give it a little bit more accentuating, accentuation. Sorry, I just can't speak it. <laughs> so I like to hold my brush on the side. Just give it some good flicks like that. So as those pieces of grass, as um, get further back, they get um, less detailed, less interesting, less contrast and so forth. So we'll let those stay lighter and let these up front stay brighter and a little bit more articulate. Okay. I'll throw some in over here. Maybe we'll make these a little bit brighter even still. So cadmium yellow into that. Take some more brush. Get some more white. It's hard to see. And that sort of feels like we're looking at the sunlight between those slats of shadow on the ground. Okay. 
All right, well, I think that sort of wraps up um, this tips and tutorials, tips and techniques. <laughs> I hope that you all enjoyed it. And um, again, I will try to get to your questions and comments if you left any. And um, yeah, so be sure to check out those links. If you missed my announcement at the beginning of this, I was talking about um, the workshops that I have available on my website. I have the video lessons where you can um, get the video lessons and some private uh, coaching with me. And we schedule a 30 minute coaching session. And I'm really excited uh, for that. Uh, and I think that we're, we're seeing some really great reactions with people who have been enjoying that as well as the private coaching uh, you can just buy separately. Um, so that's really cool. And um, yeah, so anyway, oh, as well as my regular workshops that I'm going to be doing. Um, so I will see you guys next week. And that is it. All right, you guys, thanks for watching. Bye bye. Oh, sorry, it's going to take me a little bit to do that.